It's time to check out the electromechanical tables from Zacharia Pinball. So chill out for a minute while I lay down the skinny on these banging machines starting from 1974. Tropical features seven targets, three bumpers, and a topless lesbian on the back glass. Completing the rollovers and two target spell special and lights the inlane for 50k plus an extra ball, which quickly overturns the scoreboard. Hitting stuff cycles the bulb in the center of the playfield, and nailing the middle target lights the number. Activating the last couple digits can get tricky, but it's a nice challenge. Like many of the EM tables, disabling the tilt sensor changes the game entirely, so make sure to try out all the different modes to get the most out of this collection. Granada is an adaptation from the 1972 Williams Granada, with a different layout. Knock down all the targets on one side of the upper playfield to light a special for 10,000 points. Complete rollovers to advance the middle special that adds an extra ball when you ping it. The gap is very wide, and the flippers are short making cradling and angling extra difficult. To add more pressure, the characters stare at you like your fly is unzipped, so I highly recommend playing Granada with no pants on. The object of Top Hand is to knock down the 16 targets to light the WoW lamps, which can be activated by hitting the middle spot targets or draining the ball down the out lanes. The sound it makes when all the cards pop back up is pretty cool, but it didn't wow me. The kickout holes have a challenging geometry, and if you're struggling to learn the angles or just want to bank some achievements, try going into the user setting and lowering the playfield tilt and ball velocity. You can never be too underhanded when playing top hand. Sinistar provides the minimum amount of content required to pinball. Hit all the targets and spin the duck to light the special. Why is there a duck on the spinner anyway? And could somebody please explain what's going on on the backboard? There's two slingshots on the upper playfield, even though they don't count towards the kicker achievement. Checkpoints in challenge mode can go on indefinitely, since the only tricky shot is the one between the bumpers. Sinistar is just too scripted, and just like Hollywood, caters to the lowest common denominator. Lucky Fruit implies this is a game of chance, but I can assure you pinball is a game of skill. Start off by making one of the good rollovers at the top so you can light the jolly target for 50k. From here you can take on the four sets of drop targets and go for a special. The back glass depicts a man in pink pants staring at a woman's ass. But they should have added more fruit to the playfield such as tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, or corn. But that would have confused most players. Consider yourself fortunate if you come across one of these rare seeds. Red Show is what happens when Granada and Universe have a baby out of wedlock. Dropping full banks advances the outer lamps and the action is fast, so you might not realize you've lit a special. I probably would have liked Red Show better if Lamp Hunter didn't give me such a hard time. Remember to start violently shaking the table after launching the ball so you can extinguish the lights above the rollovers. Red Show isn't music driven like the deluxe version, so it's an odd theme considering how primitive the sound was. And look at this dude's face. Is this even a dude? I don't know. Moonflight is a colorful table with a variety of extra ball options. Advance the bonus with the lit target, complete the top rollovers, or spell orbit by hitting the red banks on the right hand side enough times to complete 5 modules. These targets were adjustable in real life. I also appreciate the adequate 7 digit scoreboard which can't be said about most of the EM generation. Moonflight is bouncy and energetic, but the ball never overstays its voyage to the upper playfield, always gravitating back down to earth to continue testing the theory of relatively easy shots. Wood's Queen is the far fallow of the EM era, with a healthy serving of target banks and a set of clit teasing rollovers that are tricky to reach unless you can gracefully settle the ball without it popping back out. The back glass contains a lion, tiger, elephant, and a cheetah. Completing all the drop targets increases their value, and extinguishing the yellow lights turns on the red lights. Maxing your score by owning the special is probably the biggest challenge out of all the EM tables, so I highly recommend brushing up on Wood's Queen before you get shafted. The object of aerobatics is to advance the 5 letters which can be done by hitting the drop targets or locking your ball into the kickout hole when advanced bonus is lit. The left and top kickout rewards are cycled by the left and right spinners respectively, and includes things like flashing bumpers and 10x bonus values. The backboard shows the pilot making a finger gun and balls to play written on the fighter jet, so make sure you have testicles before jumping into the cockpit. There's a lot of shots on the table and different ways to approach the goals, making aerobatics a highlight of the EM series. 
Nautilus is a fancy term for pelagic marine mollusk of the cephalopod family. The letter drop targets increase by 10x then 100x upon completion, and carry over between balls. The left hand hull bonus increases by rolling through the inlanes, but resets on drainage. This is the hardest challenge, but shouldn't be the main focus. Make sure to go for the cave on the top right at least once per ball so you can score a double bonus. Some real life variants have two rubber rings above the bumpers, this Nautilus doesn't. Which is good because it distinguishes it more from its counterpart, Combat. Everyone was digging passenger flights back in 77, so Zacharia came up with another airplane theme table and called it Supersonic. The playfield has a boxy flow, which can feel more like taxiing than taking off. The standing targets advance the flights in Supersonic, and the outlanes suck you out like a jet engine. I'm not sure what the deal with the right orbit is about, if you can even call it an orbit because it's more like a rounded corner. I don't know if they want you to go up it or down. Either way, what Supersonic lacks in practicality makes up for an originality. <laughs> yeah, right. Circus is what you get when you combine sex and politics. The field is small, but the outlanes are tight so it's easy to stay in the ring. You'll mostly go for the spinners to activate the double bonus down the top middle rollover, while the circus lamp should happen naturally. You'll want to capitalize on the center hole to pay out your bonus once it's filled, or just let the ball drain, which can be helpful on 90 second mode if you're trying to set a high score quickly. Overall, Circus is one of the few clown-centric tables that doesn't trip me out. Combat is the bastard child of Nautilus. The differences are subtle like the pegs on top, the right target bank, and the scoring, but the devil's in the details. My main issue is that the ball gets stuck bouncing in and out of the gun canal more often than Nautilus, but this can vary by which mode you play on and how your physics are set. The lower playfield is a bit extended, which I appreciate, but the knockout hole is still tricky to land. For real, what was going on in the late 70s with all these airplane motifs? Enlighten us in the comment section. Universe has an identity crisis. It went by the name 10 stars with the same play field, and the layout is a bit simple for a late generation EM game. Activating the kickout lamp 5 times in one ball is asking a lot from the multiverse, especially in simulation mode. If you want to score big, just focus on the 4 drop targets like you're supposed to, and go for extra balls and specials. The inlanes are razor thin, so expect a lot of bad bounces. At least they didn't even try to hide the fact that Captain Zack wears his underwear on the outside. In case you're new to the GTP rating system, play difficulty is based on how easy it is to keep a game going, which includes keeping the ball up and activating extra balls. Master difficulty is determined by how hard it is to see all the features on the table, which include all the specials and multipliers. This does not include the several thousand in-game achievements, which is the real crux of this package. That's all for now, but if you want me to continue spitting out videos, make sure to like, subscribe, and engage with the comment section, and share this video with random haters on the internet.